Hello, and welcome to Five Year Club video number 177, Cocky Bo! I probably did not pronounce that correctly. Alexa, turn off the reading light. Uh, you may hear a little bit of fan in the background because it is super hot in San Jose and I need to cool the condo down so that tomorrow I have a chance of surviving because it's also going to be very hot on the weekend. Okay, um, so I'm as I've mentioned before probably, I'm rereading this book on World uh, Savings History and it particularly talks a lot about Japan. Uh, Japan has had a long history of promoting savings within its country across different governments for many different reasons and they um, did it for many uh, different reasons particularly around World War II they got really aggressive to the point where uh, their savings encouragement could definitely be um, thought of more as taxation but um, nevertheless uh, yeah, there is that history. Uh, I think most recently their their consumption has picked up uh, around the year 2000 or so, but some of that has to do with the aging population, blah, 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 macroeconomics. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about these kind of obscure Japanese savings history things that most people uh, are not going to know. Uh, first of all, what is this Kakibo thing? Is that some kinky shit? No, it's um, the name of a... Uh, home account book that Honey Matoko Honey Matoko uh, came up with. So Honey Matoko, 1873 to 1957, um, was the uh, female founder of um, a woman's companion, uh, Fuji Notomo, uh, which was kind of like the ladies' home journal of Japan, is my understanding. It was very popular. It had a circulation uh, at one point of something like 800,000 or maybe that's just you know d during a certain year I, I I remember that number from the book I read so I don't remember what year it was anyway um, everyone in Japan knew Honey Motoko and knew uh, this publication the woman's companion um, and um, in it, she encouraged housewives in Japan because in that culture, at that time, um, it was like the men go to work and the women take care of household affairs. Not encouraging that, not saying like do that on this channel. I'm just saying that that's, that's what the deal was at that time in that country. So this is like the context that frames um, what she did, which I guess is in, in some ways is, is all that much more amazing because she was the only female, I think, to graduate from her, her class in college and um, is considered to be Japan's first female journalist. So she was really um, a pretty aggressive career woman in her time. Um, anyhow, so cool. So she came up with this account book that uh, people, and specifically women, could use to economize their households for their own good and for the good of the country. Uh, there's someone else who has written much more beautifully than I ever could about this. I'm going to leave this link in the description so you can read about it. Uh, Kakibo, how budgeting the Japanese way makes you more mindful and richer. I like this because it's kind of a different um, take on mindfulness. Um, a lot of the mindfulness I've heard about recently is like, you know, uh, meditation journeys. Um, but this is more like mindfulness that you get from sitting down and making some marks on paper. Minimize that spreadsheet. Kakibo is about to make keeping track of your finances far more inspiring. Here's your cheat sheet to the Japanese art of saving money. Um, I use spreadsheets, and I use spreadsheets because I can make graphs with them that look pretty to me and um, I enjoy that a lot. I do understand though that there's a lot of people who are really not into spreadsheets and that just sounds like hell to them and I want to help people to save money and be successful financially no matter how they go about doing it whether they follow what I do or some other method and I think there are some advantages to setting a pen to paper. Number one it's slower right? 
because it just takes longer to write this stuff out. If you do it um, in this kind of organized way, you've got to like measure the lines and stuff. And that causes you to slow down in your thinking a little bit, which lets you kind of chew on your expenses a little bit longer and chew on what you're doing a little bit longer than you otherwise would. I know that's true when I write uh, by hand, I use more complex sentences than when I write on a computer. I use more simple sentences because I have longer to think about the sentence in the first place. Let's read a little bit of this. What is kakibo, or technically, what is a kakibo? 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 Cake. Cake bow. Invented by Japanese journalist Hani Motoko at the turn of the 20th century, cake bow, ha ha ha, literally means book of accounts for household economy. I know what you're thinking. This sounds dry, 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 but bear with me. This is a philosophy, not simply a statement of funds in and funds out. In the manner of Mary Kondo of The Life-Changing Magic of Tiding fame, which is a book, uh, which I'm not sure if I agree with, but I think it's worth reading, so go check that out if you want to. Filling in your cake bow is both a practical exercise in that you write down your finances and get them in order, but also a well-being enhancing activity as the Japanese believe that mindfully saving, spending, and monitoring your money leads to balance and calm in all areas of your life. The cake bow was devised by a pretty sassy sounding Japanese reporter who also happened to be the only girl to go to school in her year and one of the first to attend Japan, Japan Women's University in Tokyo. Born in 1873, Hani Motoko was the first officially recognized female journalist in the country, established the world's oldest women's magazine in circulation and founded a school for girls to improve women's education and independence. On the side, she found time to print her cake bow a tangible means of accounting that combined keeping a financial journal with encouraging proverbs and affirmations and gentle yet revealing questions. What area of your spending has surprised you the most? Key stuff like that. A cake bow encourages you to look to the future, focus on the present and reflect on the past, but not in an overwhelming manner and with plenty of wisdom and motivation sprinkled along the way, making it a lot more pleasurable to use on the daily than your average Excel doc. And here's a book uh, that you can get on Amazon, I believe. Cake Bow, The Japanese Art of Saving Money. Uh, I have not read that book, so can't endorse it, but maybe it's a good book to read. How does it work? There are various stages to breaking down your finances when using a cake bow, and your and your and you chart your funds on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis with an annual overview and time to reflect self questionnaire after 12 months. You can begin a cake bow at any time, but now seems as good a time as any, seeing as most of us are feeling a bit broke post Christmas. Number one, write down your monthly projected income and expenses, such as bills and other regular outgoings. If you're not too sure on one or both, it's advised to underestimate your income and overestimate your costs after establishing your projected income and expenses. You can then divide the difference into spending money and saving savings goals. Use your weekly chart to record your spending as you go. A cake bow splits spending into four different categories. General, for transport, food, and prescriptions. Leisure, for entertainment. Zara halls, pub trips. I don't know what a Zara hall is. Guess I gotta look that up. Culture, activities that enrich you intellectually. Think books and art exhibitions, not so much the pub trips. And finally, unexpected extras such as repairs, gifts, and emergencies. At the end of the month, you add up your spending to see whether you've stuck to your initial targets, analyze whether said targets are actually realistic, and reflect on your achievements, efforts, and where you might improve. Plus, you can see which categories are costing you the most dearly and identify any potential weak spots. Zara clacks on. Hmm, what is this Zara thing? They like that a lot. Uh, the review sections of the cake bow are also where you'll find your motivating affirmations, and they're pretty highbrow. Think pearls of wisdom from Buddha rather than cheesy insta inspo quotes. Is there a difference? Who knows? Continue as above until the end of the year when it's annual self-report time. A cake bow gives you the template and tools to plot your financial year in a pie chart and graph if that's your jam while your year-end questionnaire steers you to take a step back from your numbers and mull over the benefits of your new super responsible accounting habits while quizzing you on what you might have 
on why you might have had a mare of a month. When were you most in control and felt optimistic about your financial situation and when you were at your happiest throughout the year? It's basically a bookkeeper and a life coach rolled into one. Why do you need it? Unless you're already plotting your financial projections onto a finely tuned and regularly updated multi-tabbed spreadsheet system, chances are a cake bow can help you. And I would agree with that. Like, if this seems appealing to you and you're not doing anything else, do this. Do anything. It'll get you 80% of the way there. 90% of the way there. Doing anything will get you like 80% of the way there. Plus, Microsoft Office doesn't deliver such nuggets of insight as a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Lao Tzu. If you wince when taking a speedy scroll through your bank balance, a cake bow is probably for you. And if you generally want to get your financial affairs in order in a fashion that isn't overly daunting, establishing a habit of noting down your aim, strengths, and successes can help you feel more empowered about money rather than running for the hills every time a bill comes in. Not that it's easy... Laying everything out in black and white and taking stock of where you're really at disregarding credit limits is undoubtedly a scary process. A bit like anything worth doing in life, it can be time consuming, painful to start out painful and to start out with seemingly more harrowing than helpful. But a few months and packed lunch boxes down the line, you'll feel a, lo a lot more sorted, driven, and proud of your responsible adult self. The overall aim of a cake bow is to get you to a place of truly valuing things, thinking about how and why you spend as much as what you actually spend it on. Heavily, heavy, but ultimately enlightening, particularly if you engage in the what should I buy flowchart created by Matoko. Or should I buy it flowchart <laughs> created by Matoko. Your ASOS order will become a lot more streamlined. ASOS orders will become a lot more streamlined. Um, the one thing I wanted to say is like, uh, when you're saving money, you have to fill time with time that you would have been shopping before or like comparing products or something because now you're not buying those things because you're saving the money. And I spend some of that time doing my planning and spreadsheets, creating different charts and graphs and coming up with things to analyze and compare. But if you're more of an artsy person and you like putting pen to paper and writing things down, then maybe this is a better way to fill some of that time. And because you have, like, a good amount of that time, if you're, like, making serious changes in your life, you can actually do a really good job on these on these books. Is there an app for that? Yes, but that slightly defeats the point. A pen and paper system is intended to make filling in a cake bow more mindful and contemplative. But to be honest, whatever works to get you back in the black. There are even entire cake bow templates categorized by meal planning, food groups, social activities, and spending events such as weddings, but all of the above can literally be accounted for in Matoko's 1904 originally, original, which has handily just been translated and updated for an English-speaking readership. Yeah, so there you go. The cake bow. Uh, so that's cool. Um, now, while looking into this, I came across Bujo, which has absolutely nothing to do with Japan. Bujo is a uh, bullet journal. It's like a cool way of saying bullet journal. And I have actually already opened this link, so let's go there. Um, and yeah, so this person who I don't know who they are. Let's go see who, see who this person is. Created by Ryder Carroll, a digital product designer living in Brooklyn. Through many years of trial and error, the system has evolved into the ideas presented here. He sees this as an evolving, adaptable practice meant to be self-curated as you determine what works best for you. So, yeah, Bullet Journal, I think, is a company, actually, that sells uh, a bullet journal. So he's got a little store here, so it's his, it's his side business. Uh, it's become, like, a popular side business. I'm sure it's very profitable for him uh, selling these things. Um, but there's nothing like super special about Bujo. It's just this thing that this guy came up with, but it has inspired people and that's cool. And because it's inspired people, you can look online. Anyway, back to the story. Uh, basically his friend was freaked out about planning a wedding and he was like, let me show you my process. And then she was like, oh my God, this is amazing. You got to show everybody and get rich. All right. End of story. 
so yeah, that's bullet journaling. You can look on Google Images and you can find a ton of different ideas and nerd out about uh, what you know how you can create your own bullet journal, um, what you can put in the bullet journal, uh, what different colors you can use. To be honest, it's a lot like scrapbooking, but instead of pictures of your friends and family, it's like your budget for the month. But also, you know, but with scrapbook style, with cute photos and stickers and, you know, plots of things that you do by hand and perfection and all the things that Lewis is completely unable to do with pen and paper. This is what bullet journaling is about. Um, so, yeah, let's look at this one for a second. Uh, let's see if I can... Uh, shrink myself. Oh no, I'm tiny. Okay, come on, make this bigger. I'm huge. All right. Um, so let's look at the ideas that this person has in their bullet journal. They have, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they have mapped out the weather for themselves. They've got a monthly uh, thing that they decided to put right there, which I would not have the patience to write this monthly thing over and over again, but they apparently do. Uh, they have a few different kinds of reminder lists. They keep track of their sleep down here. Um, and I guess that's the eight and a half hour mark they're trying to hit with, it's like color coded, holy moly. They keep track of their steps every single day with little footprints, that's crazy. And these beautiful donuts on Friday. I don't know what that means, but donuts are delicious. So you can see how this kind of, you know, combines uh, the, wait, is that PTO? like paid time off man lucky this person um, so this kind of you know combines like the responsibility of reporting information with the excitement of drawing a strawberry unless that's a sticker and I messed up and there's also a cute little panda here thing with a heart um, so yeah funny story uh, one of my neighbors was um, getting excited about bullet journaling he was actually I think the president of my homeowners association and he ordered some fountain pens so that he could like make super fancy bujo stuff for himself and then some some douchebag boyfriend of somebody who lived in the complex stole his amazon package and the thing was this guy had a camera on his doorbell and so he saw this idiot stealing the package and since this guy is dating someone in the complex He's around all the time. Everybody knows what he looks like. And so to get revenge, uh, the guy posted uh, the, the, the thief's picture uh, next to all the mailboxes. And uh, I don't know whether he got his calligraphy pins back or not, um, his fountain pins back, but uh, yeah, local drama with, with the Bujo. Um, and then I found uh, this other example. I just pulled two from uh, Google Images that looked like Someone had put some decent effort into them. You got some cute elephants going on down here and some happy birthday stuff. I don't know. It looks fun. I wish I could do this, but I can't. But if you can and you're interested in doing it, do it. Looks fun. And, uh, yeah, just try to figure out a system that you can repeat over and over again. So that is it for Five Year Club video number 177. Cake bow or bujo, your choice. Uh, both ways to keep up with your finances, both ways to, you know, actually one of the most interesting things I wanted to mention here that I have seen was someone who created a little uh, graph here, I think it was a monthly graph, where she would color in just the square of the day with her mood. And this is really interesting because if you combine something like that with like how much money you spent that day, then you could actually like visually track your mood with whether you're doing some retail therapy and if you do that for an entire month you're gonna know whether you're doing retail therapy and then you can decide like well do I want to keep doing this do I want to substitute some other kind of therapy when I feel bad um, or do I want to change my life so I don't feel bad as often so that I don't feel the need to spend yeah so there's all kinds of ideas there are YouTube videos where people will like draw it in front of you and speed it up so that you can see their ideas live and they'll talk about it and you can nerd out about all that stuff. I know I probably will. All right, that's it for Five Year Club video number 177. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, and have a fabulous cake bow evening.